Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. And so for today's video, I'm going to be trying out a whole box full of the new lipsticks from ABH. They have dropped some satins and a new matte formula. So I have both formulas. I have lots of lippies to try on today and to let you know how I feel. Is this the comeback that ABH are desperately in need of in 2022? Let's find out. So ABH have dropped 18 new shades of lipstick. These retail for £21 or $23. And there are 12 satin shades to choose from and six matte shades. All of the lipsticks are vegan and cruelty free. And among the claims are that they are long lasting, highly pigmented with supreme comfort. So the satin formula claims to be a highly pigmented formula that dresses the lips in a luxurious shine. This long lasting lipstick offers supreme comfort and wearability and its soft creamy formula glides onto the lips effortlessly. The classic bullet tip helps to ensure optimal precision from mistake free application. The matte formula fuses the powerful pigment of a matte with the creamy application of a satin. Brilliantly pigmented, the lipstick offers game-changing payoff with a velvety full coverage with just the slightest hint of shine that catches the light and creates the illusion of a plumper pout. The bullet tip allows smooth application across the entire lip in a single swipe and perfectly shapes your cupid's bow. So those are the claims of these two new formulas. Now it has been a long time since I purchased anything from ABH. I think the last thing I purchased was the Brow Freeze, which I love. But as far as eyeshadow palettes that they were kind of famous for and just coming out with really innovative formulas and color stories, I feel like ABH has somewhat lost their way. And there's been a lot of misses when we look at their last year of releases. I feel like they definitely lost their way with the Norvina collection and everything else just kind of woo, got a bit muddled up. I feel like they definitely lost the hype that they had a few years ago. I'm really pleased that they reformulated their lipsticks because as I said in my, I think my will I buy it video, the matte lipstick formula from ABH was like not the best. It was very, very dry, not the greatest shades, just yeah. I feel like it was lacking when you look at their collection, when you look at all of their products, the weakest by far for me was their lip products and you need lip products. If you're like gonna be up there competing with the brands, and I feel like ABH, their kind of competitors where they sit in the market for me is like with MAC, with uh, Huda, Huda Beauty, some of the influencer brands, and I just feel like they're way behind when it comes to the lip offering that they have. So I'm super pleased. The first thing I noticed when I got these lipsticks out of the boxes, this packaging is very nice very nice. It feels weighty and luxurious in the hand. It's that lovely chic rose gold. I think it's just beautiful. There's also a nice amount of attention to detail with the logo on the inside there. I think that's lovely. And it has a click closure, no magnetic closure, which I actually like because then with magnetic closures, I like the feel of it in principle, but then they fight each other. If you've got them, you know, in a drawer or you're storing them next to each other, they fight each other, which these don't. They look lovely. I also thought when I got them out that they were going to be very like easy to leave fingerprints and they do not at all. I don't know how they've managed that. I was in fact, confession time, eating a pizza when these arrived and I thought, oh dear, I wanna get them out. I wanna have a look at them. But I thought, oh dear, fingerprint city fingerprint central, nothing, not a smear, not a smudge. There was nothing on there despite me having the greasiest of pores. So that's just a little thing that I noticed. I know that's irritating to some people where there's smudges and fingerprints all over this. And this packaging looks like it would be the worst case scenario when it comes to leaving smudges and fingerprints, but it does not at all. So that's a cheeky little bonus. So I picked up four shades of the satin formula, that being my preference for a formula, and one shade of the matte. Will a video ever be made where I don't drop something? I mean, where is the lid? Oh, there. 
As I was saying, I picked up four shades of the satin formula and one shade of the matte formula. Satins are definitely my preference when it comes to a lip formula. I find them more flattering, more comfortable, just more what I like. But I did want to try the new matte formula for you and see whether it's any better than their old formula and how I like it. So without further ado, let's get into some swatches. So first up is Peach Bud. This is described as a peachy pink with a satin finish. such a pretty peachy nude like easy everyday shade very very pretty and just soft it applied really nicely it feels really smooth and it's not like gathering in lines or anything like that it's a really nice smooth just shiny it's not super glossy it is definitely just a, a like a hint of a shine to it that satin finish very pretty very soft lovely shade next up we have warm peach which is described as a soft peach with a satin finish just a little lighter than peach bud definitely a bit lighter than peach bud but more of a like a classic peach peach bud was more of a pinky peach this one is definitely more of a classic light peach on me on my skin tone I would prefer this one with a liner but I think it's a gorgeous shade on my skin tone it needs a liner if you have a fairer skin tone this would be a very easy wearable shade for you but it is quite warm so that will depend on your skin tone your undertone whether you that's going to flatter you and whether that's your preference but on me I think it's really beautiful it just needs a liner because it is quite close to my skin tone next up we have peach amber which is described as a deep warm peach with a satin finish Okay, so instantly this is my favourite of the peaches. I just think this is the one that suits my skin tone the best. I don't need a liner. It's got a really nice balance of tones. It's not like super warm peach and it's also not too pink. It's just a nice sort of neutral peach. Beautiful shade. I think that's my favourite peach. I just think it suits me, my skin tone, the best of the three. And then the last of the satins I picked up is Soft Brown, described as a soft, warm brown with a satin finish. Another gorgeous shade. This is just a perfect everyday nude for me. I really like these sort of juicy finishes and I really like just this wearable nude shade for everyday. This would be like a perfect everyday colour for me. It just applied really nicely. It's got the perfect amount of pigment and it's not like leaning super warm or too cool. It's just it, it lies right in the middle. It's not super peachy. It is like a lovely soft brown exactly as described. I feel like all of these shades actually are perfectly named, perfectly described for how they're appearing on the lips. A really lovely, very easy to wear shade, no liner needed, no mirror needed, very easy to apply and it looked really beautiful and natural and soft on the lips. And lastly, the one matte shade I picked up is American Doll and this is described as a classic red with a matte finish. Excuse the hideous application. I definitely could have done with a liner just to give me a crisper line to the lips, but the pigmentation is definitely there. It's a beautiful, oh my teeth, it's a beautiful red, like the perfect, slightly brighter, I would say than like your classic red, but it's a 
perfect like Christmas red. Very, very beautiful. Reminds me of like Velvet Ribbon from Lisa Eldridge. Definitely on the brighter side as opposed to something like Pat McGrath's Elson. It's, it's gorgeous. A perfect summer red, I would say as well. Reds are not just for Christmas. They're for summer too. And all year round. They're for life. So again, we have Peach Bud, Warm Peach, Peach Amber, Soft Brown, and American Doll. Okay, so here are my thoughts on these lipsticks. Let's start off with the matte formula, just because I only have one, so it's easier to hold, and hopefully I won't throw it across the room. This is undoubtedly a massive improvement on their original matte lipstick formula. As I said, it was quite dry, it was stiff on the lips, it was not comfortable, it was drying on the lips, and the shade range was also lacking. There are only a few shades of this matte lipstick to choose from at the moment. I think the six shades out of the 18 in the range, so I definitely would like to see more and more nudes in that range. I think that's an obvious next step for the brand. As far as the formula, I think it's very smooth, creamy, and comfortable. I definitely agree with all of those claims. I do not agree that it's like one swipe full opacity. You know, I use a lot of very, very nice matte lipsticks. Lisa Eldridge's formula, Pat McGrath's formula. Those matte lipsticks have like insane one swipe, like the most full coverage opacity on the lips with one pass. And this is definitely not that. That's not to say you can't achieve like full opacity. They definitely go up to a full coverage, full opaque color, but you need a couple of passes. So that's just something that I feel like is not quite there from the claims. It is a nice shaped bullet, even though it was a really bright red opaque lipstick, I was able to get a decent application, even though it was like the fifth lipstick that I applied today, which usually by the last one, things have started to slide. So I do like the shape and the feel of the bullet, and I think it was easy to get a nice application, even with my haphazard heavy hands. It did feel very nice and smooth and comfortable and flattering on the lips. It didn't feel really heavy. It didn't feel dry at all. And I would compare them to like Max matte formula that as it says in the claims, it has a slight shine, which is how come they're able to be a bit more comfortable than a full, full flat matte. So uh, yeah, I really like this. As far as matte lipsticks go, I think this is a lovely formula. I would love to see some nudes and just some more shades in general. The satin formula, of course, this is my favourite. I love satin lipsticks. I love that there are a load of peachy colours to choose from because that's like my personal preference. So for me personally, that is a win. This is the shade Peach Amber. This is the shade I put back on to wear today because it is my favourite of the four that I tried. I think these are very, very nice. They're very lightweight very smooth and just feel very creamy to apply. They're a thicker formula, definitely not similar to like the Lisa Eldridge Luxuriously Lucent. That is a much thinner formula than these are a bit thicker, more similar to say the Charlotte Tilbury kissing formula, I'd say. They have a really nice medium coverage, I would say. Again, very buildable. You could easily do a light coverage, a very natural layer, and then you can kind of build up from there if you want to. Very, very nice and comfortable, juicy, a lovely amount of shine, but they just feel lovely, smooth, and creamy on the lips. There's no stickiness, and yeah, I think they just look beautiful. I really, really like these. Love the packaging. They were exactly what I was kind of expecting and really hoping for from the brand. As I said at the beginning, I really feel like ABH, they need some wins quite early on in this year. They need to like come have a comeback. I feel like from the last couple of years kind of being a little bit lost in on the wayside, but these I think are a great start. I think it's a product they needed to reboot, they needed to revamp. It was definitely lacking and letting the brand down a little. And these I think are beautiful. I love the packaging. And for me, it's definitely perked up my attention for the brand again, because this is the most I've enjoyed an ABH product for a long time. So for me, it was definitely a win. I also think that the price point of these is much more back where ABH need to be. I think for a while, they seem to have got a little bit carried away with their pricing. Their foundation was ridiculously priced in the UK. I ranted and raved about that for a while. I think their palettes seem to have been getting more and more expensive. And they started almost pricing themselves out of the market because their foundation was in the like Chanel 
price range and I just don't see ABH being in that same kind of ballpark as Chanel and being a real luxury brand. I definitely feel like they're more of a mid-range and these are much more reasonably priced for where I think that they should sit. So that's just my little musings on that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.